So in the example, I want to show you a case study working with an architect and they sent me this Revit background and told me that there is some room for me to inject my creativity. So there's some parameters about getting this patio level with the area for the pool, furnitures around it, a play area and activity and some barbecue and seating under this canopy. So these were the parameters that I had around to design something that was maybe realistic and send it back for their feedback. So you can see part of this beginning phase was just to really, you know, drawing red of the things that I think make sense that could go into these potential areas. So this would be done on a layer of itself. So when that's kind of roughly planned out, I would start to find the line weight to start tracing the rest of the architecture and the buildings around. This would include the background, the building in the foreground, midground, and background. And slowly I will build the scene up layer by layer. So some of these things are placed on their own layer in case I wanted to edit or take them out later on. So be mindful where you have layers so you don't have to draw everything on one layer. So there's a, quite a lot of detail for this simple sketch. And the idea really here is to make it believable. You know, this is a place where you're trying to show all the amenities on this roof space. You're trying to make an area where someone can imagine, you know, going there and spending their, you know, afternoon or the weekend in. And then when that's done, I began coloring. So these would be coloring with my watercolor marker brush. And slowly, you know, I will build this layer by layer. And you can also see the building in the background. I actually took that out because the client wanted to see more of the mountain. And that was very easy to do with editing a layer of its own. And there's also some revisions made to the level where the units have a front or backyard in red. So I had to edit part of that out and make sure that those unit have a walk out space. So you can imagine this is much easier to do with an iPad and drawing in Procreate as opposed to doing this on paper it would have been very difficult to do. So this kind of back and forth with the client is very typical with my own workflow and I'm able to do this with careful layer management and a system that has worked very well um, since I began drawing on Procreate. So hopefully this process is useful. You can get some of these brushes and files in the description below if you are interested to try it out for yourself. So if you enjoy this tutorial, cheers.